2.2, basic differentiation rules and rates of changes. A rate of change is a derivative. We'll talk about that more, but you hear the word rate of change, it's derivative, slope. Derivative means slope, rate of change means slope. You'll get used to it. We're going to take the derivative of these three. The derivative of f of x equals negative 2. If you think of this line, it's a horizontal line at negative 2. So the derivative of this is basically going to be, by the way, this is how you write derivative, put a little prime sign, and it's just 0. Because the slope of this is always 0. It's a flat line. Now, it's a rule. Anytime you have a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. This one, if I want to take the derivative of this, first we put f prime x. Now, there's a really simple rule. You take the 2 and you leave it out front. We're going to derive x to the third. Okay? We're going to derive x squared. And we're going to derive x. Now, looking at this, x, what's the slope of the line x? The slope is 1. Anytime you derive x, you get 1. Because the slope of x is 1. Now, the derivative of x squared, it's really simple. All you do is you take this 2, put it out front, and write an x. Now, really that's x to the first. Because what you do is you take this power 2 and decrease it by 1. So I'm going to put a 1 there. You don't need it, but that's really what's happening. You take the 2, put it in front, and decrease the exponent by 1. The 3, x to the third, you take the 3, put it out front, x, and you decrease 3 by 1, and you get 2. That's your derivative. You're done. Just simplify it. It kind of seems too easy. 2 times 3 is 6, x squared. That just is simply minus 2x, and that simply is 3. That is the derivative of the above function. What does the derivative mean again? For this graph, say I plug in 8 to this graph, that gives me the output of the graph. If I plug 8 into here, it gives me the slope of that previous point on the graph. It's kind of cool. All right, find the derivative of this one. What we first want to do, actually, is we don't want fractions like this. So there are a couple things we're going to do. First, what I'm going to do is actually, I need to distribute this 3 in. And that's kind of a bad word to say. But x to the, x, 2x to the third means 2x times 2x times 2x, which is 8x to the third. Okay, again. 2x to the third is 2x times 2x times 2x, 8x to the third. Now, I also don't want to have this on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 5 over 8. And I'm going to make this x to the negative third. Isn't that 5 eighths? And this is x to the negative third. You're changing it to a negative power. Can you see how you're going to be able to bring the negative 3 in front and minus 1 from it? OK. Now, let's derive it now. You leave the 5 eighths. You're going to derive x to the negative third. Leave the 2. And you're going to derive cosine. So. Let's start with the cosine. The derivative of cosine, you'll learn, is negative sine x. Derivative of this, well, you take the negative 3, put it out front, leave the x, subtract 1 from negative 3, you have negative 4. There's your derivative. We just now need to simplify it. And one of the annoying things of derivatives is simplifying. Why simplify? Well, when you get to multiple choice tests, your answer is not always nice and neat. You've got to find the right answer. Sorry. OK. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 
over 8. Now, oh, won't that x to the fourth go to the bottom? The negative power, doesn't it take it back to the bottom? And then won't this times this give you negative 2 sine x? There's your derivative. And by the way, derivatives have a little prime sign. So you can reference it as the derivative. All right. 36. We're finding the slope of this at 5, 0. The coordinates 5, 0. Meaning, if I plug in 5, do you understand I'm getting 0 out? They're nice enough to give you the coordinate, even though, duh, I could have done it myself. I'm not an idiot. Anyways, find the slope at this point. Well, to find the slope at that point, don't you first have to find the derivative? So, the problem is, you not, as of now, you don't know how to deal with an exponent outside of a binomial. So what we first have to do is rewrite this as, the farther we go, you'll learn how to do this. But for now, you first have to FOIL this out. It's kind of annoying. So when we FOIL this out, you get a 3 out front, and you're going to get 25 minus 10x plus x squared. Now, could I distribute the 3? Or could I just leave it? Because isn't that just a number sitting out front, and when you derive a constant, it stays kind of? So if I derive this, I leave the 3. The derivative of 25 is 0. Remember, a constant when you derive it, 0. The derivative of negative 10x, well, remember, x derived is 1. So negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. This one, when you derive x squared, is going to be, bring the 2 out front, bring the x, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. You can put a 1, or you don't need it, really. So, f prime x is equal to, bless you, f prime x is equal to, um, we can distribute the 3, that's 0, that's negative 30, and that's plus 6x. So we're not done, though. That's the derivative. We want to find f prime what? Where are we finding the derivative at? 5. We know the coordinate. We want the derivative there. So basically, all we do is plug in what? We wanted the derivative at 5. So we're going to plug in 5. So f prime 5 is equal to negative 30 plus 30, which doesn't that mean it's a horizontal line? So the slope at 5, 0 is 0. All right. Number 44. We just want to take the simple derivative. Now, I don't have a derivative formula for fractions yet. But watch this. This is what you got to get used to. Doesn't x divide by each one of those? It's a trick you're going to have to get used to. It's a very, very common trick that people get messed up all the time with. What's 2x squared divided? Actually, I'm going to write it out. 2x squared divided by x minus 3x divided by x plus 1 divided by x. Divide x by all of those pieces. This gives you f of x is equal to, h of x is equal to, sorry. Doesn't that become 2x minus 3 plus, wait, do I want an x on the bottom? I want to change that to x to the negative first power. Remember, you never want x on the bottom of a fraction, so you change them to negative powers. 
And then after you derive it, you have to change it back to positive powers. It's kind of annoying. OK. Now, let's derive this. We put the prime sign. So when we derive it, derivative of 2x, well, x derived is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. The derivative of a constant, negative 3, is 0. And the derivative of this, well, you take the negative 1, put it out front, and subtract 1 from negative 1, you get negative 2. Now, that is an answer, but let's get rid of that negative fraction. So my answer, and I'm going to kind of do it with powers. You'll see in a second here. Um, I'm going to make, take this one and be first. Put negative 1 over x squared plus 2. Because usually you put your uh, variables first. So this is first. This is 0 and 2. That's the derivative of the original.